Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. Today I've got an exciting unboxing for you guys. This is a Kickstarter delivery of Hexplorit, The Valley of the Dead King. This is a game that I had my eye on even before it hit Kickstarter. It looked really unique and cool and really blended the exploration side of things in an adventure game with kind of a really heavy RPG feel. And it really had a unique way of building your characters and also keeping track of all that information. I really thought it was interesting. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little rundown as to what the game is about in terms of an overview. And then what we're going to do is we're going to crack into the box and actually take a look at the contents inside. So Hexport is a hero building adventure game. Enter a realm teeming with fantasy creatures, heroes, and villains. Select your hero by combining two character options, your role and your race. Your role is your profession and your race is your heritage and species. This combination is gonna drive your hero's strengths, weaknesses, and defines their special abilities. You'll use dry erase markers to keep track of your hero's strength. Travel across the map, earning power-ups by completing quests and battling opponents of several different types. Move carefully to avoid multiple dangers and travel from city to city, visiting shrines and ruins along the way. Gain power quickly, for the dead king also moves. He takes away your cities as, the, as you play the game, and for each city he destroys, he gains more power. The object of Hexbore is to power up your heroes as quickly as possible, to eventually defeat the dead king himself. The game is won if you confront and defeat him, bringing light back to the valley. So there's the rundown of Hexplorit, but now I know why you guys are actually here, and that's to see what is inside this game. So let's check it out. Let's flip over to the back side of it, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Again, this is a solid box. It weighs quite a bit. It's, a, it's an average size box, but it is. it seems packed full. Like, I literally don't think there's any room in this box left it literally weighs a ton um so we're gonna go ahead and i'm gonna try this i may not read because we actually just covered this right now this is going to give you a little bit of a view as to what the game looks like you've got some of the artwork here of course there's a little bit of a sheen on it because i've still got the plastic or the wrap on it uh the box contents are up here there's a massive list um it says there's over 700 hero combinations in the box which is absolutely insane again it's from kickstarter and i cannot wait to crack this open so without further ado let's pull this camera back a little bit and do exactly that here we go so let's crack this thing down the side. I'll see if I can avoid cutting the nice artwork in the back. And let's see what we got. I'm really excited about this one. This one was, uh, I, I don't know, I've been waiting for this one for a while. Um, it wasn't late or anything like that, but I just was super excited to get it. Um, man, this box is solid. Like, I don't think there's going to be any breathing room in this thing. So here's a better shot of the box um, when it actually has no um, wrap on it whatsoever. So obviously the artwork sticks out a little bit more. It's much better that way. Now we're going to go ahead and take the top off the box. Very solid box design. I'll give you some information on the side here. So Hexplored Valley of the Dead King. It's a 60 to 180 plus minute game. One to seven players, 14 plus. This is the Kickstarter edition and Reaper miniatures are inside of it. That's pretty cool. So as you can see, I was right. It's literally full to the brim with stuff. So the first thing you're going to get is the Hexplored Valley of the Dead King rule book. And you can see it's actually a nice hand sized rule book, um, but it's decently thick for being that small. So that's an interesting choice to go with more of a smaller rule book. I kind of like that because if you need this near the game board, it's not gonna take up so much space. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let's see what it looks like inside. Uh, wow, so there's really cool artwork there. There's the box contents. There's the table of contents. Let's take a look and see how this is laid out. I'm really curious. So you got yourself a nice preface to this story. You guys can read that if you want. Got some really cool artwork for sure. There's the setup. And we'll move along. It looks like things are, uh, at least the writing and the text and stuff like that, very easy to read. And it looks like they did a really good job um, laying this out. And this is the setup section. So the tab even says setup. I'll be going through this setup in a uh, solo setup video. We'll cover how to get all this stuff to the table. This is showing you a little bit about the marking of the attack defense and all the different masteries you can get, things like that. All using that dry erase marker, which is really cool. How to set up the game board. Here's the game board itself and the land that you can kind of travel in. Again, it's randomized every single time. So those tile placements are not always exactly in the same order. That's a really cool part of it. Uh, so again, this is all still part of the setup. So I'll be covering all of that. 
The artwork though throughout it is really cool, so they did a really good job with that. Uh, there's the gameplay section, so of course we'll be covering most of this during the playthrough, talking about your player boards and whatnot. Combat, whole section on that. I like it, I'm actually a fan of this rulebook. Mainly because I'm, I'm noticing that like even though it appears to be fairly thick, at about 63 pages, um, I'd say half of that is either space in between or pictures. So it's it's not that bad. There's not that much, it's not walls of text. It looks like they really organized it well. That's always a good thing when you're learning a new game. Uh, what is this? This is the uh, a guide to the valley. Interesting, it's kind of printed in a book format, so that's kind of cool. I don't know exactly what this is. Okay, so this is showing you a little bit about how you can essentially take all the different map tiles and arrange them in different ways to maybe get different gameplay styles and, and scenarios out of it. Not necessarily scenarios, but uh, the placement of that actual world. So this is more of a vertical build, more of a clumped build. There you go, you got some blank space in the middle. I'm sure that adds some different elements to the game. I like that. That's gonna. I'm sure that actually comes into play in terms of changing the mechanics a little bit. So that's pretty cool. This is a fold out. So there's, oh wow, there's actually a ton. So there's a whole bunch. If you're looking for examples, there you go. Or of course, I'm sure you can just get creative yourself and uh, throw them out there. I, I, there may be a, a method to the madness of building it, but um, that's a really nice handy guide. Okay, right here we have something that is not labeled. It just says, uh, new heroes, villains, and a new set of adventures await. Threads will begin to unravel next summer. Oh, this must be an advertisement for an upcoming game, possibly. That looks pretty cool. So some very interesting artwork. Let's see what's inside here. Oh, oh, it's an expansion. Look at that. I had no idea they were actually going to do that. So there's a Hexport, the Forest of Adramon, if I'm correct, uh, pronouncing that correctly. That's pretty cool. So it's good to know that they were obviously... Wow. So you can see here the League of Hexplorers. My guess is that these are all the Kickstarter backers on the page. So that's a really nice thing to do uh, to give everyone kind of credit for jumping in on that. That's awesome. And now we get to the punch boards. Okay, so we got a bunch of punch boards here. So let's go through these uh, as we can. And of course, there's going to be probably quite a few of these. So I'll take out one and show you them one at a time. So... This is the uh, the punch board. You got, and again, I can't speak to exactly what these things are, but these are going to be the t these are going to be what's on the top and bottom, kind of in between the actual map. And I don't know exactly what everything is just yet, but I guarantee you, I'm going to be diving into this and I'll be explaining it thoroughly. So there's one punch board there. Here's another one here. Again, the nice artwork on the boards, things like that. You got those map tiles of different sizes, so it's really going to allow you abilities or the ability to basically change up the map. That's cool. There's quite a bit of punch boards in here, I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's another one kind of with a huge crater in the middle of the map, stuff like that. They've obviously, so again, there's icons on specific spots, so you're going to become familiar with where to go for certain things, but because the map and the land will change you when you're playing it over and over again, there's a lot of replayability there. That's really cool. Kind of almost has this, like to me, what it's reminding me of is a little bit of Mage Knight, but a little bit more dynamic of a, of a world building system in terms of the map, at least. Um, that's the only reason I mentioned Mage Knight, because it has similar uh, hex tiles. Um, so this is really interesting, and there's quite a few of them here. So this would add quite a bit to the gameplay. Uh, you got mountains showing up here as well. You got some, what looks like to be ruins or maybe like an underground dungeon. A um, bunch of other ones. Oh, you got snow covered mountains and kind of a lake area up here. There's a lake. This is frozen, I think. And plains, grasslands, forests, all that kind of stuff. Really cool. I like it. Uh, the backside. Oh, look at that. The backside has some like crazy art. So I did. That's really interesting, actually. So each of the backs of the tiles has like full blown artwork on it. So that's a nice use of, of the, uh, the backs of the tiles. Instead of them just being generic and boring, they actually have some life to them. That's really cool. Um, some of them are the same, but hey, I mean, it's, it's better than nothing. So that's pretty interesting. All right, so those are the punch boards. Next up, uh, you got some baggies. So again, guys, uh, companies are doing this more often. They're providing baggies inside the games themselves. I really like that, keep it up. Uh, we've got a ton of dry erase markers. So there's probably seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them, that's awesome. So again, of course, they'll run out eventually. Uh, and you can go ahead and pick them up pretty cheap at a dollar store, most likely. So don't be concerned about that, but the game does really focus on that. There's a lot of custom dice for Hexplorer, as you can see. These are really cool, and there's tons of them. I wasn't, I'm surprised, actually, by how many there are. So I don't think you're going to be lacking in the dice department in terms of uh, if you're playing with seven people, that's a decent amount of dice. I don't, I think, like, I don't know what the average roll is going to entail in terms of how many dice, but... 
I'd say you're not going to be struggling to uh, to be reaching across the table uh, to grab the dice from a friend. And if you're playing solo like I am, you're going to have tons of dice. That's never a bad thing. Okay, so over here looks like these are the uh, character boards. I imagine there's an absolutely insane amount of them, would be my guess. I don't know if I should take the trays out or not. I guess I have to. There you go. So if I take the tray out, the first tray, and this is really well packaged. Um, we've got a bunch of decks. I have no idea what these are. These are probably explore token. These, you know, if you're doing a particular quest, stuff like that, they're probably labeled by the symbol. But these are all in deck boxes, it appears. So that's really interesting. I'll take this one out first because it's the easiest. Uh, again, can't even tell you what this is. Maybe it says in the back. There you go. Races. So we've got races. I think each one of these would be the same back. Yep. So these are all the different races you can be in the game. There's a bunch of attributes and things like that. Gnome, Shade. This would be great for uh, even just playing an RPG and having all of this stuff laid out for you in terms of all the different types you could be. So you can see some of them are going to be uh, hex exclusive for just the Kickstarter backers. So if you don't uh, or you hadn't Kickstarted it, you won't get those ones. But you can see there's a ton in the box. You're not going to miss out on, uh, on on like a massive amount of content or anything like that. But there are some exclusives, so be aware of that. Um, check that out. Uh, so these, I don't know what these are. This says Deck of the Dead King. Uh, so it says Burden of the King, things like that. I don't know what's, you know, should be shown or not shown. So I'm going to avoid opening that one, I think, on camera. And if I do, I'll maybe wait till the end. But let's do like the power up deck. So at least it labels it. That's a plus. That makes sense. Uh, you roll three hexes, I guess, and maybe it allows you to get a power up card. I really like the idea that these things are in um, their own little deck boxes. That's really cool. So there's like a pile of cards, for instance. This is going to give you health. So let's go ahead actually and tear this plastic wrap off for an example and show you guys kind of what it looks like. If if I can actually get into this fast enough. There we go. Okay, so we'll tear that off on the side and see what we got here. The production on it's really good. I'm like, I'm, I'm impressed. It's, it is, uh, you know, everything, all the theme of it, it jives. All the artwork and, and the way they've set up these, even these, I'm really excited to go through those. Uh, it just looks good, and the art's really good too. So the cards here, health, I've been saying it, exercise, so plus one to your health. you got energy cards, health and energy. So I guess you can get these types of upgrades that are going to boost different stats that you've probably predefined on your character board using the dry erase marker. Maybe these add to it, and then they get put back in the deck. Something like that would be my guess. Uh, we've got all kinds of different versions, though. Masteries of stuff, I guess, at some point. Uh, you can get multiple upgrades at the same time. What is this? This is still favored opponent. Oh, that's cool. So it goes from just giving you generic stat boost to actual, um, you get to choose some things. Distribute bonus between any of the following. Interesting. Okay, so there's a lot of, there's some there's some really cool ones. Maybe these, oh, your choice. Interesting. So yeah, you're getting like a little bit of your own choice and you can see these cards increase in how many skills you get. That one's pretty insane. All abilities plus one, that'd be nice. Oh, wow. All stats. Jeez. Now that's the card you want. There's the rare card of the pile. Uh, okay, so that's really interesting. I like the fact that you can put them back in the deck box. Uh, my guess is that if you're planning on sleeving it, you're not going to be using these deck boxes. So that's the only downside. However, I don't know. It depends on how much this game is shuffled as to whether or not a, um, sleeving it makes any sense. I'll have to wait till I actually start playing it to tell you anything about that. Uh, let's take a look at one of the encounter decks here, just so you guys can get an idea of, I don't know if this is an encounter, but I'm assuming an exclamation mark shows a little bit of information about that. So let's uh, tear into this and see. Uh, we got this off. So I don't know what this is exactly. It looks like an event because you got these event tags up in the top. So spoilage. So these are going to give you some story elements, right? Like mold, fisherman's luck. They're telling you which die to roll and maybe where and which type of hex it has to be on to do that particular uh, thing. So this is really cool. I like this. Um, there's a discovery, so you can find portals, fortresses, cave systems. There's weather events that can happen from nature. You got affliction. So it looks like he's really categorized the cards well. You're not going to have a hard time uh, figuring them out. And then, of course, you get into enemies and how they're going to change. It looks like I don't know what that means. Maybe you roll this die first to determine which category or what type of wolves they are and what type of special ability they have that's really cool so they scale or maybe not scale is the best word but they uh they're going to constantly be changing you're not going to be just if you find the marauders twice they're going to be behave differently maybe the next time that type of thing lots of really really cool wow there's a lot in here so again being that it's got cards and these aren't miniatures this is what's really cool but is they can pack so much stuff there's even some 
QR code here. Turn in, tune in each month for new circumstance. Yep, you got a QR code there you can use. That's really cool. So they've done a decent job with that. Happy with that. Okay, so let's go past the cards for now. I won't bother opening up any more decks because I think we got a, a decent idea of what they look like. Uh, let's move into the um, yeah, let's move into the character boards because they look really interesting. So I'll put this back in its spot. Oh my gosh, this is an insane amount of stuff. No wonder the box was so heavy. Look at this. That is ridiculous. Look at how many... What? <laughs> okay, so if I look at the back of these, they have... Oh, that is so awesome. So every single board has full artwork for your character. That is so cool. Okay, so I don't know. Okay, and they even break out the types of character like utility, striker, healer. Wow, that's a lot. Okay, so let me let me try to figure out where this ends so I can break this down because there's a lot going on here. The artwork is so cool in the backs. So these are really high quality because, again, they're erasable, right? So you've got, like, the Nomad, for instance. There's his full chart. You're able to write your name on this. Again, you use a dry erase marker right on this board, which is very cool. They're very thick. And then, of course, if you want a nice picture of the individual, the back says it all. The Tinker Smith. There's the Tinker Smith. Wow, the artwork's so good. I love it. The Trap Specialist. Jeez, looks awesome. Well done, guys. The Summoner. Yeah, I'm liking that. The Beastmaster. Really cool. Really cool. The Sorcerer. I feel like this is the kind of game where if you're playing it, uh, especially if you're, if you're going to play it not solo with other people, you'd want to have your player board straight up and down so they can actually see the back of it. Because the artwork on the back side is just awesome. And I think with the high gloss printing that they did, the artwork is really, really popping. With the, I hope it's coming across on the, on the camera well enough, but it's very cool. So we got the Hunter here. Every single one is so unique um, and really, really shines. Like that's that's just nuts. Uh, the Guardian, there, actually I remember that from the rule book, so an assist. So again, you're looking up in the top left hand corner, you're seeing that they're categorizing each of these different type of players, so you can build maybe uh, a group of them that fits a certain mold, you can go in with a bunch of strikers maybe, or you can mix it up and have some healers in there, or you can have guys that are assist, like the Weaponsmith. Um, so cool, just a, such a massive amount. And I don't know which ones are Kickstarter exclusive, so I have to apologize about that. There could be ones in here that uh, that only come in the Kickstarter version. This is the battle mat, so this is going to be another one you're going to be using to keep track of stuff. Can't speak to anything on this, but you can see there's like a starter easy, medium, difficult, uh, heroic, and epic difficulty. So there is scaling in the game as well. You've got conditions listed out on this reference card of all the things that all the terrible things that can happen to you um, that the uh, dead king can do to you. Here's the scoundrel. Again, more impressive artwork. Uh, the priest. Wow. I'm just blown away. I was not expecting the artwork on the back. I was thinking that these were going to be just like this. And there was going to be nothing on the back. They went the extra mile with that. And it might have been part of the Kickstarter stretch goals to get those on the back. Could be mistaken. And maybe I knew that and forgot. Um, but regardless, well done, guys. Really, really, really nice. Like, just fantastic. Berserker. And the Illusionist. That's it. Yeah, that's, what I did. that's it. Only those. <laughs> Tons of stuff. There's still a whole bunch more of other things that I don't even know what I'm looking at. So let me break these out for you. So these are going to become reference boards probably for visiting towns and things like that. So you've got like a market board for instance. Um, so an item, the goal, the description, the use of that. Again, they correspond to different tiles. You've got an upgrading your gear at the market. Uh, this is the cities. So of course you've got different cities in the land that you can check out. Uh, freeing a fallen city. So if a city has fallen, you can help them out. So that's that one. Uh, you've got this. So again, different market ones. I don't know if you pull a new market one every single time you go and maybe they do different things. You've got a black market area, which probably has stuff that's extremely rare. It probably costs a lot of money. Opening the black market. Cool. you got ruins. So every time you go to a ruin, you're going to be rolling on the chart. This is really reminiscent of like Shadows of Brimstone and Kingdom Death Monster in terms of rolling on a chart. And I've always liked that mechanic. It keeps things fresh. You don't know what's coming up, that type of thing. So that's really cool. Shrines and Blessings. Uh, game turns. Movement skills. So this is a reference sheet. That would be something you want to keep close to you in terms of all the different things you can do. Again, great quality. Well done. Uh, these are, I guess, enemies maybe? Maybe these are the different ones that you can go up against. So maybe it's not just the Dead King, but there's the Dead King's stats 
on one side and uh, oh wow the frost giant yarl maybe there's more than just one enemy in the game like in terms of the big bad uh, looks like there's a whole bunch of them that's so cool uh, yeah, this is going to be awesome. I really think the playthrough for this is going to be fun. I don't know about you guys, but if you're excited about the playthrough, I want to know. So let me know in the comments below if you are looking forward to this one on Rolling Solo because I can guarantee you 99.9% .9 that I'm going to be looking at this one to do a showcase of. We actually got a couple miniatures here at the bottom that were floating around. So I don't know if one's supposed to represent... Okay, so maybe one represents the Dead King. Um, and the one maybe represents your party as they move throughout the land would be my guess. Uh, because there's not enough miniatures for all the heroes. Uh, there could be... I think that's it. I think that covers the whole box, actually. So that is everything. I didn't open up all the packs. Because I just don't know if there's something in here that I should be showing or not. This one here, the Dead King pack. Um, let me see what it shows. Uh, this could be Kickstarter exclusive. Maybe that's why. So again... Take that, if you want to know what's Kickstarter exclusive and what isn't, definitely check out the Kickstarter page because it would help you uh, figure that out. But basically, you got a bunch of cards. I don't know if these are going to be accounts, uh, or not accounts, but um, events and things like that. Um, you got rituals that can happen. Or maybe this is the deck for the Dead King, and these are the things that he's doing. Like, maybe this is actually what's his AI deck, and what's kind of, yeah, deck of the, that would kind of make sense. This could be his deck in terms of how he behaves on the game board. So... Anyway, really cool. Uh, cannot wait to get this one to the table. I'll be learning this one off camera, and then we're going to be jumping into this one for sure in the future. So that pretty much wraps it up. That is the unboxing of Hexplorer, the Valley of the Dead King. Looks awesome. Well done, guys. I cannot wait to dive in. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see a playthrough of this. Give me a like, thumbs up, and I will see you in the next episode of Rolling Solo. Thanks again, and keep on rolling solo.